Regarding conventions, um, it, there was a time and place when they really did matter. Um, when, when people in those uh, uh, so-called smoke-filled rooms would get together and, and actually pick somebody. Um, that hasn't been true in our lifetimes, basically. Um, and, and that's not to say conventions don't matter. Conventions still have a lot of uh, symbolic oomph. Uh, they really are like the, the mass calling card of the party, uh, where the party can show its best and brightest on display. Um, this time around, it's entirely possible uh, there are real issues in the Republican Party uh, over what its platform represents. Uh, should it still be pro-life or not? Uh, where is it going to stand on the deficit? For instance, where is it going to stand in foreign policy? I mean, those are genuine issues. It's not for nothing that we're seeing such a, a heady uh, debate on the Republican side, and that might carry over into the convention itself. And now, there's zero chance we're going to see anything like the 1968 convention uh, that the Democrats had in Chicago. I mean, nobody is going to get beaten up. There's not going to be any violence or anything like that. Uh, but there might be spirited debate within each political party. One of the things I've found is that uh, even though this population, for the most part, lacks citizenship, the relative newcomers to the United States, many of them lack legal documentation, uh, but even those who have working papers, they're not yet naturalized. Uh, nevertheless, though, they're remarkably attentive to American politics and especially issues related to uh, immigration and wall building and the like. Mm -hmm. In general, um, uh, commentators of every stripe recognize that the Latino vote is uh, very much a swing constituency. Okay, so the, the partisanship is not very well hardened and crystallized. Uh, there seems to be a lot of potential to go back and forth between the political parties and maybe some um, uh, reluctance even to participate in the first place, uh, a certain amount of distancing between that block and uh, conventional American politics. Uh, well, the same is true, what I found, with the immigrant population. So if we sort of narrowed down that block to look just at recent immigrants, um, many of whom are not naturalized, uh, they still have a voice that uh, can be activated. Uh, there's some reluctance to take part. But what I found in my own research is that when asked if they uh, had any direct participation in the immigrants' rights mobilization from 2006, half did. Okay. Uh, as a follow-up, I asked, uh, if to, for those who did not directly become involved, I asked, did a close family member or friend uh, take part? Half of those said yes. Okay. So we're talking about just this, this enormous outpouring of participation. And, uh, and statistically, now, you can link that participation to activity during um, the general elections in 2006. And presumably, a lot of that energy will spill over into the general elections of 2008. Uh, so that even people who lack uh, citizenship still find their voice out there. Uh, they uh, get active in all kinds of ways, encouraging people who can vote to vote, knocking on doors. Uh, some of them uh, go out like that to protest, but, but more of them participate in just everyday conventional kinds of ways. So, so there's this sort of um, subtext in the American electorate that I think can, in, in certain localities at least, uh, play an important uh, part in a pivotal election season.